Yo guys, it's been a while since I've done a James Bond review. So today I have returned with For Your Eyes Only. So let's talk about it. Moonraker did very well at the box office. In fact, it was the highest grossing Bond movie up to that point without the inflation taken into account. And it remained to be so all the way until GoldenEye came out in 1995. However, a lot of the fans and critics did like this absurd route that the producers went with this movie. So the producers thought they should bring Bond back down to earth. And that movie obviously became For Your Eyes Only. So let's now talk about the movie itself, starting with the negatives. And my biggest problem with this movie are the villains. They aren't terribly written or something, but they're just not all that memorable, especially when you compare it to some of the villains of the previous movies, where you have henchmen with steel teeth, and guys that want to take over the earth or build empires in space and underwater, compared to the villains in this movie, where they're just some smugglers. And I get that they wanted to make a more realistic Bond movie with this one. But yeah, that creates some limitations in what you can do with the villains. And that really shows because the villains are some of the most forgettable in the entire series, despite being played by very good actors. Julian Glover was great in The Empire Strikes Back and Indiana Jones The Last Crusade. But unfortunately, here he is quite forgettable. But that also has to do with the fact that we don't learn that he's a villain until much later on in the movie. And I also think that BB Doll's character is quite annoying and she really has no reason to be in this movie at all. She has little to no bearing on the plot. So I think her character could have just been scrapped altogether. And the story wouldn't have to be changed that much. And that would have saved us a lot of pretty awkward scenes between her and Roger Moore. I also think that this movie has one of the weaker pre-title sequences in the entire series. The tone is very odd in the pre-title sequence, especially compared to the rest of the movie. And even though I like the reference to Bond's wife and to Blofeld in the opening, the way that they kill off Blofeld is really bizarre. But I get that the, that the producers didn't really have the rights to Blofeld and it was more of a symbolic middle finger to Kevin McClory, who only two years later produced his own James Bond movie. But we'll get to that one later. And the last thing is that there's this one very odd action scene where Bond fights the ice skaters, which in my opinion could just have been a deleted scene. It's very off, especially compared to all the other action scenes in this movie. But despite those things, there's a lot of great stuff in this movie. So let's now talk about the good. And like I said, with this movie, the producers want to bring Bond back down to earth. And I think they really succeeded with that one. The tone is more serious than any other Roger Moore Bond movie. And I think Roger Moore did a serious performance in this movie very well actually. Despite him being pretty well known as the more lighthearted and humorous Bond. I think he really nailed his performance in this one as well. Where he brought a more serious take on the character and the Roger Moore jokes were more fear, few and far between. But I think Roger Moore did really well in this movie. And I especially like this one shot where Roger Moore's Bond gives one a very pissed look when they killed the Countess. 
it's a very brief moment, but yeah, that's one of the rare moments where Roger Moore's bolt really seems pissed and quite dangerous actually. And I think that this movie gave Roger Moore's coolest and most cold-blooded kill in his era. Where Bond has Emil Locke cornered in a car at the edge of a cliff and Bond kicks the car off the cliff like a badass. Yeah. That's easily my favorite kill that Roger Moore's Bond made. And with this movie we switched to director John Glenn who remained to be the director of the Bond movies throughout all of the 80s and I think he brought this movie down to earth really well. There's a lot of cool suspense, all the action scenes are great, like the car chase with the Citroen 2CV, the ski chase is amazing, and I really like the rock climbing sequence, which despite not being a big action scene, is probably my favorite scene of this movie. Because yeah, they wanted to make this a more realistic Bond movie. And with a rock climbing sequence, I think they really nailed it. Because bigger isn't always better. And the smaller scale of this movie is why I love it so much. And the climax, again, smaller scale than the previous two, but again, I really like it for the simple reason that it is smaller and more personal and I love the main Bond girl of this movie. It's one of the rare moments that the Bond girl actually has a character arc and she's out for revenge and this movie wasn't scored by John Barry but by Bill Conti who is mostly famous for doing the Rocky soundtrack. And I really like his score for this movie. Yes, it's very 80s, but hey, I love the 80s. So I really like this music in this movie. And speaking of the music, it once again has a fantastic title song, this time performed by Sheena Easton. And I really like that she actually made an appearance in the title sequence in this movie. And to this day, she's the only singer to appear in the title sequence, which I really like. And Bond also visits great locations in this movie, mostly set in Greece, but yeah, it looks just stunning. And you have, again, a lot of great underwater sequences. And this movie is filmed really well. I also really like Colombo as an ally to Bond. Yeah, this movie has more memorable allies than bad guys. But I really like Colombo as a character. And I really like this movie. So to me they successfully brought back So to me they successfully brought Bond back down to earth and the result is a pretty great Bond movie, which would I probably give an 8 overall and an 8 on the entertainment scale. And I think this is a solid addition to the James Bond franchise.